everyone and welcome back to the beginning. Today is a very special episode. Well, it's almost special. We are on episode 49 out of 50. Oh my goodness. We also have our second episode of the new characters, which I'm just like so excited to get into quests with the new characters. Although Yala Heim behind us is looking a little crusty, but like I feel like we are so much of Star Staple. Like they'll get to it eventually. I'm just impatient. Yala Heim is also one of my favorites places. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Today we are continuing on the main story quest. In the last episode, we saved Lisa. <laughs> I don't know why I get so confused. And today we're speaking to her here at Yorvik Stables. Let's see what she has to say. I'm a little bit on edge today because I'm meant to have a parcel coming and I don't know when. I just know it's like today. I think it usually comes around 10, 11. Sometimes it's like 1 or 2 o'clock. Actually, sometimes with Amazon it's like 4 p.m. Getting packages is so stressful. <laughs> but hopefully we won't get interrupted. You know what I have to do? I have to turn my music on. Oh my gosh. Someone was like, see, I can't really see my hair. Like, it's just like my eyes phase it out. But someone was like commenting on it a few videos ago. And now I'm like... I don't know what looks good with my fringe, you guys. <laughs> Hi, Cassandra. Now I truly, now I feel truly rested after our recent hardships. I'm ready to talk to the sleeping widow to repay the debt. I have to. Okay, it's early morning. I've like just started getting into it. <laughs> I'm ready to talk to the sleeping widow to repay the debt I have to her after she helped me out of Pandoria. Maybe you can help me. You know that ancient tree better than I do at this point and I have the feeling that I won't exactly get away with being an easy t with being an easy task every time that I go to do like an American accent for her my mind is just so blank I just don't I don't know how to do it <laughs> how lovely that you want to help me I'm afraid I'm going to need all the help I can get let's find out what kind of favor the sleeping widow is expecting I'm curious as to what it could be Right then, ready for a little adventure? Nice. Let's see who's gonna get to the sleeping widow first. Last one to the primal tree gets a little piggy. Take whatever route you like. Hmm. I'm thinking I'll probably go through the gold spur farm and over the northern Greydew mountains. Starshine, run like the wind. Okay, is this like an actual go whatever way or? Yeah, I think it is go whatever way. Okay, let's go. My horse is so slow because he's really sad because I don't look after my horses. You know, speaking of that, I don't think I ever actually, yeah, I never did. So he's actually, I think our orc is gonna be as gelding. And I'm gonna make him eternal because he is my starter horse. Okay, I'm not sure if Lisa is meant to be faster than us, but it's kind of fun how they add these little things into the quest, I guess, so you don't just trailer there. It's like a little something something, but that's not gonna be much too interesting. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, skip forward to when we reach the Sleeping Widow. I think that this would have been a lot more fun if my horse wasn't depressed, but I've only got myself to blame for that one. But we have finally made it. I think we're here. There we go. And here comes Lisa. Somehow we beat her. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. You did it. You won. I guess that means it's me who's the little piggy, but little pigs are cute too, right? Is she really still awake? It seems like she's sleeping. Maybe we can just get out of here. She's probably forgotten all about our favors and arrangements. I'm sorry, what, Lisa? You made a promise to the sleeping widow. What are you saying? Come on, let's head home. It's probably for the best. Hmm? You want to try getting through to her? I suppose we'd better. Yeah, we should, Lisa. Wait, what the heck, Lisa? This doesn't seem very Lisa Peterson to me. <laughs> Try talking to her and we'll see. Is Lisa, like, not kind? <laughs> Am I being dramatic? <laughs> Creak and crackle? About time. I wondered where you'd all got to. Oh, you're awake after all. My dear friend, I'm as awake as I can be. Firstly, I just wanted to repeat my thanks for helping me out of Pandoria's prison. Without your help and the help of Starshine and Cassandra, I'd never have been able to leave. I'm here to repay my debt to you. I'm completely at your service. What could I possibly do to repay what you did for me? I helped you out of your prison. Now I want you to help me out of mine. 
My wish is that you help me to once again become a part of the contact network of the primal trees, and I'm certain you can help me. Humans took the lives of my kind with their barbaric de deforestation. Such despicable treatment. I will never forgive them, even though they swore it was a hideous mistake. Traitors, deceitful in soul and nature. Well, well, as if it wasn't enough that I was left alone when the lives of my kind were torn down. I was also disconnected from our network. Because of all this death, the roots that connected me to my kind withered away and died, leaving me isolated from our community. My roots may as well reach all the way to Pandoria, but they don't reach as far as the next living primeval tree. My companion has the link between me and the next tree, and was therefore my only connection to the network of roots that made it possible for us to communicate. I haven't been in touch with my kind for centuries. I thought perhaps you might take care of that, Lisa and Cassandra. Dearest ancient tree, it's a true honor to re receive such a task. Do you have any, um, some kind of, uh, suggestion as to how we might exactly go about it? Uh, Lisa, I have a suggestion. When Aideen came to the world, she healed the land and spread life over the dead cliffs. With her song, her music, and her light, you can ride over the bay and bring my roots back to life so I might reconnect with the primal tree at the Scarecrow Hill. Mama. Eh? Difficult? No, no, my little friends. Aideen did it and so can you. You're not trying to wriggle out of our agreement, are you? You won't disappoint me, like all the other treacherous humans have always done. Of course not. Not all humans are deceitful in their soul and nature. We are definitely not petty traitors, but the legend of Aideen's ancient exploits is exactly that. Just a legend. How do we? I don't know how you do it. Aideen could... Sh you'll simply have to figure out how she did. Now it's just a matter of a few roots. Aideen actually created life. I'm not asking for those kinds of miracles from you. How hard can it be? How? No, it it can't be that difficult. I'm sorry, but what kind of... It, was this angle purposeful? Right? My roots need to reach right across the bay. You can see the primal tree on a scarecrow hill from here. So close, yet so... So far away. When my roots reach the other side, I'll be part of the network of primal trees again. You must help me. We'll do our absolute best. We promise to do everything in our power to help you. I know you're capable. Aideen was. I've spoken. It's up to you to get this done. The time for talking is over. Hmm, right over water? Bring dead roots back to life? How's that going to work? This all sounds pretty tricky. I doubt it'll work out. I've got no idea how we'll make our request come true. I suppose we can at least start with a little recon reconnaissance. Let's go and see if we can locate the remains of the sawn down primal tree. I seem to remember seeing a huge tree stump by the breach. A little north of here. Let's go. Why am I like lagging a little bit? Okay. Where's Lisa? Is Lisa still coming? Yeah, Lisa's still coming. I'll just chill with the music, it's fine. Here's where the primal tree that was cut down centuries ago used to stand. So that means the Sleeping Widow's roots reach out to about here. We're going to need to make sure that the roots grow out from- Grow out over the bay here and right across to the beach at Golden Hills Valley on the other side. See it? Let's ride down to the shore over there and take a closer look. Um, oh yeah, this shore. I thought we meant like over the other side and I was like, I don't want to ride all the way over there. <laughs> Groski, why am I lagging? It's like a little seashore. Wow, I wouldn't have guessed. It's like glitching out. I don't know if it's the rainbow. I don't know if the rainbow makes me laggy. Oh, look, there's roots in the in the water. Uh, here's a better view. See, right down there, I can just see how the roots stick out. There are a few feet below. Water is one thing that I know how to say in an American way. Below the water's surface. <laughs> But they reach to here and no further. Hmm. How's this ever going to work? Can't we just 
pull some string across the bay and attach a couple of tin cans on the either end. Easier to just talk on a tin can phone, right? Mm, sorry. Seriously, though, it's pretty obvious we need help. We need advice. Linda knows loads about the primeval trees, and Elizabeth is usually full of wisdom. Linda and Alex are most often to be found on spy duty along the coast. They're keeping a lookout in case Dark Horse hood hoods <laughs> come ashore someplace. Sometimes they're, fr they're free, though, and then Linda's almost definitely at the vineyard. I can ride over to Valedale and talk to Elizabeth if you go to the vineyard and get Linda's advice. If she's even there, that is. Okay? See you later! We're coming to pick you up. You will transfer it back to the stable. No, I'm still lagging. Hello? Can we, like, not lag? It's not horrible, but it's, like, something. Hey, Cassandra. So it's you again. Great to see you. Any news? Oh, you said you're going to do what? The Prime Vodry thinks you should copy the exploits of the Aideen from the legend? Oh, my. When I read about the Prime Vodrys and their fate... I also learned that the Sleeping Widow was cut off from the network of roots and so can't communicate with the others. I fully understand why she'd ask you to do this. It must be awful to be so isolated in that way. But bringing life to dead roots or even getting her roots to grow across the entire bay sounds complex to me. That said, those primeval trees are wise. They know things we don't know. Maybe it's possible to do as Aideen did in the legend. Somehow, you've got the fragment with her light. And we know that the legend claims the light can bring life to the dead. I mean, the Sleeping Widow herself reacted to the light and those tears. Hmm. According to the legend, Aideen had a harp in one hand and the life-giving light of yours, Flame, in the other hand, in the other when she rode across the water. The legend says that her music and her light is what brought forth life to Jorvik. Lisa possesses the strong healing power of the Circle of Stars. With Lisa's healing magic... And if you've got the light in the harp, maybe you can actually do something similar to that which Aideen did in the legend. Maybe it's precisely what the primeval tree means. Maybe you can actually get the roots to grow out over the seabed of the bay and reach the other side. Maybe. Maybe you don't literally need to actually ride over the water. Surely you can use a boat. Either way, you'll need the harp and I know where it is. Oh, I have a text message on my cell phone from Lisa. She says she's spoken to Elizabeth, who seems to think that if you play the right melody on Aideen's harp, you can actually ride over the water. Lisa's apparently got all the info about how to learn the melody, which makes it all possible. She's on her way to a horse trailer. Where were we? Oh yeah, all these maybes. It seems as though Aideen's harp is on display at the museum in Jorvik City. They usually have it on show when they have their historical exhibitions. Hey... By the way, did you know that this is the actual harp that's on Jorvik's flag? The green on the flag represents the beautiful green island of Jorvik and the luscious and rich life that covers the land. The blue above the green represents heaven and the blue below is the sea. The white lines symbolize timelines from history and for the future. But enough about Jorvik's flag now. Look, here comes Lisa. Wow. Hey guys, got anything yet? Yeah, Lisa, we have. I was just saying that, as weird as it sounds, you might just be able to mimic Aideen's legendary life-bringing movements, just as the primeval tree seems to want. Cassandra has the fragment. Lisa, you have the healing magic from the Circle of Stars. Elizabeth already told you that, the, that you can ride over the water with the help of a melody played on Aideen's harp. If that works, you won't even need to think about cheating with a boat. Amazing. Okay, I think with the new, like, Soul Riders, maybe this all glitched out. I don't know. <laughs> Amazing. It sounds totally crazy, but it's worth a try in any case. The worst that can happen is that we get a bit wet around the hooves. I'm still super doubtful as to whether it'll even work, though. Oh, well. I guess it'll be me playing the harp, then, since I'm pretty well used to string instruments. Cassandra, you're alright with shining the light fragment? You know, since you've used it before and all? Aideen's fragment, which is with Cassandra, is still loaded with light, so it doesn't need to be recharged. That's good, but back to the harp. Sadly, the museum in Jorvik City is closed for, for refurbishment. Yeah, typical. I heard that from Elizabeth, but she said that Councilman in Silverglade Village is friends with the museum curator. And you, Cassandra, you know the Councilman pretty well, right? Smart. 
Cassandra, you ride over to the councilman and ask if he wouldn't mind asking the curator for a favor by opening up the museum and lending us the heart for a while, okay? Then it sounds like we've got a plan, right? We'll meet up here again after you've spoken to the councilman in Silverglade Village. In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can try and convince the butler to give us a ride to Yorvik City in his car. Why am I at 38? Oh my goodness. How am I at 38 FPS? <laughs> what is going on? Okay, I refreshed like I logged off and logged on. And it seems to be a little bit better. I don't know. It wasn't horrible and trust me, I used to like my max was 5 frames per second on some of my old computers. I was patient. But when I'm creating content, I want to make sure it looks as good as possible for you guys. Cassandra, wonderful weather, isn't it? And it's as nice almost every day. Have you thought about that? Star Staple, are you hinting towards weather in this extremely old quest? <laughs> hmm. If I know the museum curator in Yorvik City, I know the museum cur curator. I don't know why I struggle with the word curator. Very well indeed. We're old classmates, him and I. I can guarantee he'll let you win and let you borrow anything you need if I put in a good word for you. Which obviously I will. Put in a good word, that is. You can put my good word in the bank. I'll call him right away after we finish talking. You can ride back to your friends and let them know that the museum curator will absolutely welcome you with open arms. Of that you can be certain. Thank you, councilman. Have a lovely day with this lovely weather. Every day. <laughs> Fantastic. Now at least we know that we're welcome at the museum. Now it's just a case of getting there. The miserable old fossil doesn't want to take us to Yorvik City. At least not without her parents' permission. Stupidest thing I've ever heard. Godfrey and the Baroness owe us a pretty big. And I'm not sure they even realize that we're not kids anymore. Can you try to convince him? Didn't I, like, come to Yorvik without my parents? <laughs> hmm. Cassandra? Hello, hello. It's rather strange how everybody suddenly wants to go to the big city. You're a responsible girl with decent judgement, so I'm happy for you to come along to Yorvik City. That said, it won't be happening until tomorrow. As I don't have any errands in town until then, you'll have to remain patient until then. You can't get everything at once. Okay, well Godfrey just left us on a time limit. <laughs> Let's see, do we have like some small little quests around here? This would be an extremely short quest otherwise. Why don't we talk to the Baroness? What does the Baroness has have for us again? Okay. Oh, yes. It's about a couple of, like, the drilling in the oil field and how it's relating to the Baroness and all of her grapes. Dear Cassandra, I might actually rescue some of my poor grapes. I just got a very interesting message from my son, Aaron, at the Yorvik Council. He just found out that the serial numbers you found are listed as stolen goods. I want you to ride to Mr. Kemble and tell him that I, the Baroness of Silverglade, will show him what's what and destroy his business worldwide if he doesn't stop drilling at the Everwind Fields immediately. We are actually getting, like, we're just over halfway to level 14. That's pretty cool. You're here threatening me again? Okay, you evil little child, you win again. But just for now. I know there must be a mistake with the zero numbers, but I can't let the Baroness destroy my reputation. Tell her I will stop drilling, for now, until I have sorted things out. You really are a pain. I can't believe my reputation might be ruined by the immature acts of a stupid child. No one should be able to fool me. But you did it twice. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we did. He was actually like... That went super well. <laughs> that could have not gone as well, I reckon. Was he mad? <laughs> I can imagine that. I wish I could have seen his face. I can hear that the drilling has stopped. Well done, girl. You have saved me a lot of trouble and maybe a lot of money too. Awesome! So we're done with the Baroness now. So let's head over to the Digger Man that we left a few episodes ago. He's a new employee at uh, GED Northlink Drilling and he accidentally drilled all the way into the Baroness's cellar of wine, which is not a good thing. So we kind of stole some cement because GED wouldn't give it to us. So we kind of just redirected it. Hey there, like I said, you can always trust good old lightning. All the cement is in the cellar, in neat and tidy rows. Your buddy down there asked me to tell you to go down and talk to him. Me? I'm out of here. See ya. 
Thank you so much, Lightning. I really appreciate it. Please don't tell anyone that it was me. Uh, awkward. Why is there sparkling? I swear I just heard sparkling. Hello? Okay. Oh, wow. Cement. That's a lot of cement. Hi there. How we have all this concrete we need. Mm, I'm not sure how to do this, but I will try my best. There is another thing that maybe you can help me with. You see, I don't have a map and GPS to tell me to navigate this thing. The GD guy has said the GD guys didn't think I would need one. No room in the budget, the bus said. But without one, I don't really feel safe to start drilling again. But I have an idea. I know that at the oil field near here, there is a shed where they store both the maps and GPS receivers. Can you ride over there and see if you can get, can get a hold of one? I'm sure Mr. Kemble wouldn't mind that. Are you filling in for me? Wait, what a minute. Are you filling in for me? Is it meant to be wait or what? <laughs> Are you filling in for me? Wait a minute. I can't see very well. Let's get a good look at you. Hmm. No. You don't work for GED. Take a few steps back, please. This storage facility is for employees only. No, no, no. Take a few steps back. You're not getting past here. This storage is very, very important. How long will I be standing here? I'm waiting for someone to fill in for me. He is a bit late, but I won't be leaving my post for that. I'll wait for him if it takes a week. And don't try anything funny. I have eyes like a hawk. Maybe a short-sighted hawk, but a hawk nonetheless. Um, is it meant to be... <laughs> I think this is meant to be me talking. I need to find a way to get past that guard. Maybe the trainee has an idea. Uh, we're going back and forth again. I'm so sorry. I'm like, keep touching my... I think I need to trim it. Um, But sometimes when I curl it enough, it'll like stay above my glasses. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, I don't know. Short sighted, you say? What? Are you kidding me? You want my clothes? You want to make a big dummy? I don't know, but okay then. I'm not sure I like this though. Well, you look for something to make a dummy out of. I will take off my clothes. Promise you won't peek. Promise. I promised, good sir. What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> look for stuff in the cellar. Oh, my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad. Ah, we found a bucket. Okay. We found a broom. Oh, and a second broomstick. And this weird thing. He's in a barrel. <laughs> here I am. Here in the barrel. Here in my clo here are my clothes too. Promise I'll get them back. Ooh, it's pretty cold in here. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be cold in cellars, right? Let's see. Do you really think this will work? You would have to be almost blind to fall for this, but it's worth a try. No, I won't come out until I get my clothes back. Take the dummy and put it out in the field so the short-sighted guard they get someone filling in for him. Hurry up, it's freezing in here. But they're wearing different clothes. Anyways, I'm sure it's fine. It's star stable logic, it's fine. Wow, he is very blind. Oh, I need to be dismounted. Don't mind my horse. There's definitely not a horse here right now. Also, I'm just real quick going to pick up this bit of recycling. Stop and identify yourself. Stop! Who are you? Hmm. I don't know you. Uh, are you here to replace me? You are dressed like a GD employee and uh, standing up straight. So you must be. I like that. You can relax a little now. You don't need to stand to attention the whole time. Even though I like that you are showing me so much respect. You don't say much, do you? Great. There is too much talk around here anyway. Focus on the job, that's my advice. A word of warning though. Watch out for this girl who is trying to get into the storage shed. She's pretty tricky, but she won't fool me. Not at all, good sir. And then we're running. We're running on the spot. We're grabbing the things that we need. The GPS and the map. Don't mind us, Mr. Kemble. Oh, it's really cold in here. Hey, you're back. Can I have my clothes back now, please? So cold. Put them down beside the barrel and leave the room so I can change, please. And no peeking. I wouldn't dream of it. Okay, it's nice to have some clothes on again. Now I'm going to use this concrete to erase all traces of my little accident. 
and we've got another day quest. I think that's going to be the end of today's video. I know it's probably a little bit shorter than the recent back to the beginning episodes. In the next one, I think we're going to quickly finish off this GED one because I think it'll hopefully be relatively quick and then we'll go back to the main quest. My goal at the moment is just to do all the main quests I can because at some point we are probably going to be reputation blocked or something or level blocked and then we'll have to go and do some of the smaller quests so I'm just like waiting for that moment. Thank you as always for your support on Back to the Beginning. I really appreciate it so much. If you are interested then on the screen right now is the whole playlist for Back to the Beginning if you need to catch up on any episodes. Oh, there's also some shopping spree, some account makeovers on there. I feel like I should do another, like, shopping spree with the new characters, you know? Get a few more clothes. I did buy this shirt, this saddle pad, and also these leg wraps between episodes. I was a little cheeky cheeky. <laughs> Spent some star coins. But I kind of feel like buying a new horse, but I also ride my starter horse, like, every episode. Anyways. I love you guys so much, and I will see you all later. Bye!